Alright, welcome back to another tutorial guide for Amcrater. We'll be covering a little bit more on the GitHub today and mostly focusing on styling and the wiki pages. So we have our, we're at currently at our, um, our organization. So if we click on our repository, which is just called tutorial, and then we'll have a few different options at the top here. Uh, by default, these are all the different options that you have. However, you can go into settings and there is a few other things that you can enable. Uh, one of them being wiki. And um, the only thing with this is it has to be on a public, um, a public repository. So if you want to enable this, then you have to basically enable it, go down to your visibility and then change your visibility to public and then you can actually use it and then you just basically have to type in the um, the organization and the then the repository after it to confirm and I'm just going to put in my password there we go and yeah then it's now on public so you can also use the social preview which is basically like a social media preview um when you post it on twitter it will basically show the the image that you put in here rather than a github basically default thing you can download a template right here and you can basically use that if you want um, the other thing that you have, you have issues, we'll cover that in another video. Um, it's easy for a whole bunch of other stuff. There's also discussions. Um, this is kind of like a forum type thing. Uh, it's good for basically getting feedback and stuff like that. So you can run it through the discussions itself. We'll cover that in another part as well. Uh, but we're going to be focusing on the wiki and styling today. So let's go into our our wiki site and by default this is basically what it's going to look like when you enable it if from public or from private it's going to say welcome to the wiki tutorial or to the tutorial wiki and then you want to create your first page uh, sometimes you might already have a first page created so that's fine too um, by default you can basically just leave it as it is just uh, hit save as or save page and then you have your first page for your github um, now there's obviously a lot of different other things that you can do. There's um, your list of pages that you actually have on the side here. You can actually customize this and by setting add custom sidebar and basically it's the same same idea. Um, the only difference is you'd basically link to certain pages or certain areas and stuff like that. So for example, um, let's create a couple pages to kind of demonstrate this. So if we want to create a new page, we can go up here and we can click new page when we're on our wiki page uh, section. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to call it um, uh, styling. guide and then we will see the preview as you can see we haven't typed any content so we can't really see anything if we go back to right we can actually insert a few different things a lot of this is all at the top here that you can basically select uh, some of the styling stuff now obviously there's some other additional things that you can actually do with some of this um, some of it's kind of built into the program and stuff like that but if you ever um, get lost there is I believe a actual uh, styling table that you can view I think you just click on the question mark and then you can kind of go through the help pages there's block elements these are basically the things that build up your different thing horizontal rules these are the thing the lines that go between uh, code blocks are little boxes for code and stuff like that links or pardon me, lists are basically the dots and stuff like that. I think there's numbered list as well. Block quotes, um, those are basically comments. Uh, headers are basically your titles and stuff like that. And then uh, your paragraphs are, I can't really read from here. I'm way at the back of the mic in front of me. Um, paragraph text, simple blocks. So... This is basically just like your regular paragraph text and stuff like that. So it's just new lines and stuff. Uh, you can put um, breaks. So I believe it's two spaces if I remember correctly. And you put two spaces at the end of the line and then it will move it down to the next thing. 
And then you have um, some other elements down here, like emphasis and styling codes and stuff like that. Like links, I'll teach you how the links and stuff in just a second. It's a little bit different than your basic, you know, insert URL kind of thing here because it would insert just the text, but links are very specific. And then there's uh, emphasis, uh, code, and all that other stuff. So we'll start with uh, the basic stuff. A lot of the basic stuff you can actually see right on the top here. So let's just close out of that help window. Now, if we want a first header, so there's different types of headers. There's H1, H2, and H3. You can either basically insert it like this, or you can basically type the pound sign. And depending on what tier you want, you can either uh, go one, uh, do two for uh, header two, or three for header three. And I think there's also four, so that's not actually listed on the actual thing here, but I'm pretty sure you can actually do that. So let's go and we'll just create header one, and then we'll do two, and then we'll do header two, and then we'll do three, and then header, oh, header three, and then we'll do four, header, Four, and then you have your basic paragraph text. So uh, this is some text. And if we want a new line, we can do two spaces at the end. And then this is a new line, like so. All right, so let's take a look at what it actually looks like. And we can do that by clicking on the preview and you can see this is basically how it functions. Now, I'm not sure if the two lines actually make a difference. Yes, it does. So if you want to break, you have to put two line or two spaces at the end of the um, thing and then it'll push it down to the next line. So you can see that the headers are basically these things right here. You have your header one, header two, header three, and then header four. You only have up to header three on this one. Uh, your paragraph text is just regular text, um, no particular commenting. There's also indenting. So there's a few different, um, well, not so much indenting, but like um, your, your um, forget what are those uh, bullets and uh, numbers so if you want a bullet uh, then basically use the asterisk and then you type something after it this can be either um, another command such as a header so header uh, header uh, we'll say three and then we'll just uh, increase that by three and as you can see, we can get our header three with a bullet right there. And if we want just regular text, then we would just do the asterisk and then just our text. So text example. And you can see that that's just your regular text like that. You can also put links and stuff in as well. That's no big diff uh, difference. Uh, you just basically do the command after for the, the link and then put the link in. Um, there's also number bullets, so I'm just going to break a new line here, and then I'm going to um, just put a number and then put a period, and this should trigger the um, number formatting. So I'm going to actually do header uh, 2 this time, 2, and then I'm going to do another one with a period, and then I'm going to just go uh, text example and if you want to actually indent those particular numbers what you can do is you can go one two and one two and as you can see that the with the least the denting the um actual uh indents for the what do you call it the um I forget whether bullets, the bullets, they, they can indent, but not the numbers for some reason. I'm not sure why, but, um, you know, maybe it's just because it's more of a list kind of thing where bullets are more designed for indenting as well. So just remember, you can actually do that two space trick right at the beginning of the, uh, command and then it will indent your actual, uh, bullet and even change the icon for it as well. 
Uh, other things that you can do with this is um, obviously links. So let's go into links. If you want to create a link, then what you want to do is you want to do a square bracket and a closing square bracket. So open and closing. And then you want to basically type what you want to display as your text. So if we want to go, uh, go to, then we'll say Google. And then what we need after this is no spaces. Uh, we're right up against this, the closing square bracket. And what we want to do is create a uh, number bracket and a closing number bracket. And then what we're going to do is go HTTP and then our col or colon and then our double slash www.google.com. And if you look at it like this, you're going to see that we have a URL list right here. Now, obviously that's not on a new line. We actually have to create a double space after this, I think. And that's actually for that particular thing. So what we need to do is actually create a new line and then do a double space. And as you can see, it's going to be on its own thing now. So go to Google. So we'll click on that and I'll, we'll actually just uh, open in a new tab. And then we can see that it brings us to Google itself. So that's basically what links do. Uh, again, you can do that in pretty much anything uh, as long as it f fits the same similar format. Uh, for images though, you can actually do images too. If you wanted to insert an image, uh, that's completely optional, but um, very similar method with the links. I'm just going to create a new line, do two spaces to break it. And then I'm going to do a exclamation mark and then square bracket. Now what goes in here is actually the alt text for the image. So basically Google uses alt text to basically display when there is, when the image can't be found or something like that. It will basically say, this is what the image is. And you basically put your description of what the image is in here. And then your link for the image is in the um, same location as your, your URL text as if you were to link to Google. So let's go on to actually some site and uh, we'll just get an image off of Google for the demonstration. So what do I want to search up? I want to search um, cats and we'll just search for images. And that's a cute one right there. So we're just going to copy, just click on that, copy the URL, uh, copy image address. And then what we want to do is we want to paste that. Whoa. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit too big. Um, let's find another one. We can actually probably go to the site. And it might be a shorter URL if we just copy it from here. Uh, copy, uh, copy image address. So we'll just copy that. And then we'll just paste that in. And that's a little bit of a shorter one. What you want is a .png at the end of your URL and that will specify the image itself. Uh, you can do that from Imager as well. You can actually import uh, your own images on Imager and then basically copy the image URL from the actual site and then put it in here and then you can add your own custom images and stuff as well. And then what we're just going to call this is uh, cute cat. And then you can see, oh, took a little time to load, but we got a cute cat in this particular um, little section here so we can actually work with that. Uh, there's also line breaks. So line breaks are basically things that you space things out with. So if you want to make a line break, what you're going to do is do three asterisks and then you can see that it puts a line break right along here. Uh, that's equivalent to doing this little button right there as well. And if you want, uh, let's see, what else is there? I'm trying to think of all the other things. There's also tables as well. So if you want to create a table, what you need to do is you need to do a pipe, which is that vertical um, line that you can find under the, near the enter button. And then what you want to do is three minus signs or pardon me, you want to actually put some text. So this, the top one is going to be your actual 
title of your table. So basically what your table um, headers are for. So if we want uh, maybe um, cat types and then we'll go and then we'll say age and name. And then what we want to do is we want to create another pipe in the same order. So we have three t uh, three rows or three columns. That's how we can tell by the the text between it. And then we need to actually specify use the command to make a table. So what we're going to do is go and just add three um, minus signs, and we're going to do that for all of our columns. And then we're going to put our data on the line below that. So our cat type, we'll just say gray. We could probably just do cat color. And then we will say age um, 10 years. And then we can put uh, name. And then um, what would be a good name for a gray cat? I don't know. Bob. And then we'll do another one, which is exactly the same format. So orange, uh, five years. And then we can call this one um, Ben, because I'm not feeling too creative. And the other one, what we can call is, or the color can be um, black. And this can be maybe six months. And then we can do something like uh, Tommy, because I actually had a cat named Tommy, but it was actually gray. So he, he's long gone. He passed away a long time ago. All right. So if we have that, uh, we can actually take a look at the table. And this is what the table looks like. We have our header for the actual text. It says cat color, age, and then name. And then we have our color on this side, this column here our age on this side, and then our name for our cats there. Um, outside of that, uh, nope, there's actually a few things I almost forgot to me uh, mention. There is your comments. So if you want to comment, you just use the um, closing bracket for the uh, arrow type. I'm not sure what those are actually called. They're the, the ones that are kind of like, um, I don't know, arrow brackets I don't know what to call them and then you do a space and then you can uh, put things in like uh, your header so if you wanted a header then you could basically go and uh, do one pound sign uh, or even two and then we'll go uh, title whatever we want to put in there and then we can actually create smaller text a regular text if you want by typing um, another quotation and then we can do uh, this is a comment or quote and then we can actually see what it looks like and that's basically what it will look like right in here it has that little line on the side to indicate that it's a quote and you can actually put your titles and stuff in here as well and what else can we do we can actually go ahead and create um, code blocks now these are using the I believe these ones right here the uh, things I can just demonstrate yep so that's basically what it is if you want to basically put in your like your code then what you can basically do is the three I don't know what they're called they're on the far left of the keyboard next to the number one usually for the keyboard number uh, it's like that backwards asterisk I don't know what it's called but it's um over on that side of the keyboard and uh, you do three of those and then closing three and then you put your your text for your commands here so something like um, HT or we'll do uh, some CSS stuff so um, dot uh, we'll call it uh, style and then uh, or brackets uh, sh what sh should we uh, type um, background color if I can actually type <laughs> and then we want that and then we'll do black and closing and then we can basically see that our code basically fits in here I'm not sure if you can actually specify what language it is 
I haven't actually tried. Let's see if we can do that. CSS. Yeah, you, you can. So the first line that you actually type right here is your actual language. And it's very similar to Discord in that sense. If you have a certain language, you put it right on the um, the quote, the brackets things here. And if we wanted HTML, then we could do that as well. Uh, we could do like, I don't know, another code thing. We can go HTML and do a closing. And then we can do something like uh, body. Wait, is it? those I think it might be square brackets I honestly can't remember <laughs> all right uh, we'll do square brackets body and then we need a closing bracket and we'll just put um, p text p that and okay that might not be right I'm not sure what the commands are but um, you kind of get the idea you basically go HTML and then whatever command and stuff like that oh that's CSS that's why that one's not showing up but um, yeah so basically you can copy the actual text from here if you want to and then put it into other things like that. But um, that's basically what it does. Um, outside of that, as far as I know, that's all the stuff. Oh, there is the styling stuff too. Um, I almost forgot about that. So if you if we scroll up to our regular text, what we can do is if we want to create a something bold, I think it's just, uh, no, uh, if you want to create something italicized and it's just your regular, um, two asterisks on either side of the text similar to discord so this will italicize it if you want to make it bold i think it's two asterisks and that will make it bold like this and if you want to basically make it italicized and bold then you can do three and you can see now that it's italicized and bold like that uh, if you want to, I think, underline it, then you do a under underscore the um, thing on the minus sign, the alternative button for that. You have to shift to do it. And you might need two of those. I'm not sure. Let's clear the rest of the formatting and then we'll see. I know that it's like that on Discord. I'm not sure if that's actually a feature here though. Yeah, I don't think that's a feature. All right, so um, basically there's that. You might be able to cross it out using the curly dash. I'm not sure if that's a thing. Yeah, you can cross it out, but you can't underscore it. That's right. Um, a little bit different than Discord. So if you want to cross something out, then you do the uh, alternative version on the that same thing as the code blocks down here with these things. But it's um, with the curly thing uh, for the shift version of that. And then you can basically do two on either side and I'll cross it out. So that's basically what that does. So that's the styling. If you want to save the page, then you can just hit the save button. You can add notes if you want to. And then it should show up your actual styling index for all your HTML stuff will show up on the side here if you have that. If you have a sidebar, uh, if we go and copy the URL for the sidebar or for our page here, we can actually create a sidebar and then we can actually insert a link and we can also put in our URL and our text. We'll just call it styles and we'll click OK and then that will show up there. We can save it and then you can see that our link for our sidebar is here. If you want to go and expand our regular um, page thing, you can see that we have our other pages and stuff here as shown so we can actually click on the style on our sidebar and we can go to the page that we want to um, there is some styling at the moment for projects uh, projects are basically um, 
things that you can keep notes and stuff in, but it might be changing in the next kind of build for um, GitHub. It looks like they're kind of phasing it out in the next update, which is unfortunate, but you can still do it with Wiki at least. So that's basically the options that you have at least right now. But uh, outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.